Scott. Now, actor, director, novelist, script writer, they are just some of the trades of my next guest that he's mastered over the years. As Mrs. Brown, he's also the comedy genius behind the most popular sitcom on RTE television. Besides all that, he also happens to be a member of Mensa. Would you welcome, please, Brendan O'Carroll? Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. They're good. Great idea to have me on. Listen. Boost your ratings. We need them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take them wherever we can get them. Listen, welcome back to, Thanks very much. to, Great to, to the be show. Back. It's good to see you. Are you, sorry, are you a member of Mensa? This, where is this from? Yeah, I am a member of Mensa. What happened? Uh, just somebody suggested I should take the test, and I took it, and then there was a second test and a third test, and, and I came out with uh, an IQ that's in the top 2% uh, of the world. Uh, which I, Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, I call it, I call it, rather than Mensa, I call it, you're not as thick as you think you are. I, I might try and get some grinds off you, if that's yeah, okay. Well, no, yeah, well, yeah. no, it's, 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 it's a great illustration of what my mother said years and years ago to me. She said, never, never confuse education with intelligence. Yeah, yeah. She knew the most intelligent um, non-educated people and the most yeah. thick Educated, uh, educated people. people. And yeah. we only have to look at our political system to see that. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Listen, congratulations on... Yeah, there you thank go. You, thank you. Hey. Oh, they're away. They're away. <laughs> I know what sparks them. I'll tell you, you don't need to go to the panto anymore. <laughs> watch, watch, the, watch the news. Um, congratulations, firstly, on the success of Mrs. Brown's Boy. Uh, what a phenomenon. I mean, it's just been extraordinary. Congratulations. It's, it's, I'm delighted for you. It's caught me completely by surprise. Has it? Yeah, because I've been doing it a long time. I know. And, and um, the fact that it's coming out in RTE this year, I wrote this for RTE. Yeah. I wrote this for 2FM uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's taken t RTE television 10 years to get the joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with them. I'm, I'm very, I feel very humble, and I don't mean to be false about it, but I really do. It's kind of people going, it's amazing. And I'm going, well, it's the same thing we were doing last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But it's, it's, it's been a great response. And, and what I'm delighted about is that there's an audience out there, obviously, who, who, um, who would say, you know, Mrs. Brown is on the local theatre uh, with Brendan O'Carroll, and they go, oh, that dirty little bastard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so they would have prejudged it, but now they get a chance to see exactly what Mrs. Brown is all about. Yeah. And there's an audience there who now go, oh, I didn't know it was that yeah, funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of that. Yeah, yeah so yeah. hopefully it's, it's introduced it to an audience that it wouldn't I, have known There's before. also, I mean, I don't know if it's index-linked comedy, but I know that there's a lot of people are saying... And we were getting a lot of comment on the radio program this morning saying it's, it's a tonic. We need laughter. We need to smile. And more, now more than ever. And, you know, you're, you're giving them what they want. Comedy and life is about timing. Right. And um, at any time during a recession, and this is the worst recession we have ever known, but at any time during a recession, comedy always does well. Some of the, most of the great comedians uh, of our era came out of bad times. Sure. Out of the, 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 the crash in, in, in the US came, came Buster Keating and came Charlie Chaplin. Out of World War II came some of the great uh, British comedies. Out of recession came, came Dick Emery, came uh, Les Dawson. So at a time of recession, people turned to comedy firstly. But secondly, also at a time of recession, we get, bit, we get a bit nostalgic. Mm. We get a bit, you know, t you know, summers were longer back then. The sun was brighter, times were easier. So they get, do get it. And so Mr. Mrs. Brown just seems to fit the right bill. It's old-fashioned comedy. It's, yeah. There's nothing new in it. Where it's, did she come from? Where, in your head, remind us of the, her origination. Well, my mom, when my mom left politics, she, uh, she, instead of spending the money on us, which would have been well spent, um, <laughs> she, she, she bought some property uh, houses and knocked them into a home for, for uh, battered wives yeah. and, and homeless children. And there was 11 of us in the family. And whether we liked it or not, we volunteered. For the, to, to work in the, in, in the place. So we, uh, we would make beds and, and cook breakfast. And actually, it's funny enough, we all ended up in the hotel business. Yeah. So we learned a valuable lesson that it's, it's easy to, be, to give service without feeling servile. So we yeah. all did very well in the hotel business. And, uh, and uh, I think it, it comes from that. But when I finished school, if I went home from school, I'd be sent straight down to do whatever it was necessary. So we used to I used to skive off. Instead of going home, I used to go up to Moore Street, stash my school bag, and I used to run errands for all the, the old years there, and, and I got to know them all. So Mrs. Brown is really a collage of all of those 
um, the Reddens, the Drapers, all, all those families who've been many, many years dealers. There's, there's two uh, girls there, Mel and, Mel and Margaret. Um, and I love them because they say they're sisters and their names begin with the same letter, Mel and Margaret. <laughs> and, and, and Mel and Margaret have been selling fish uh, in Moosery for, for, for years and years and years. I remember, and they've great lines, things like, you know, you know, is that fish fresh, Mrs? Fish? Fresh? Are you kidding me? Bring that hole to me and putting them out with the cat. <laughs> uh, but they, tra they can trace their roots back to Molly Malone. Yeah, all right, okay. Uh, so, it, 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 so I was very lucky to be a part, to, to get a skim of that culture. Uh, what they had going for, going for them really was there was no men involved. Yes. All the women ran the stalls. And they loved their children. They mm. absolutely mm. adore their children. The Mercer Street dealers' children are they're just the products of great homes. And, and I t hopefully that Mrs. Brown brings that across. That although she would, you know, she'd be the first to, to criticise them. She wouldn't have anybody else criticise them. And <coughs> I used to get questions when I wrote the books. When I used to go on book tours in America, I loved doing the book tours in America yeah. because they, they, they'd ask the most ridiculous questions. I would tell lies, <laughs> you know, at the book tour about my father being, uh, my mother was a nun and my father was a leprechaun. And, <laughs> and the Americans would be there just eating it up, you know. Oh. And I'd tell the whole thing. And then they'd, somebody would ask questions. I remember one woman asked a question in Sonoma County in, 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 in California. This woman put her hand up and asked a question. Sir, could I ask you? I said, yes, I've read all your books. What is bollocks? <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is most of what I've said for the last half hour. And <laughs> 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 um, so uh, there's a universal Mrs. Brown. That's what it's got to, because it travels. I mean, you're filming in Scotland and you're showing it around the UK. And, yeah. But obviously, she's a universal mother of some description. Yeah, uh, when, I wrote, when I wrote the series, first of all, yeah. the radio series, which is a five minute piece, supposed to run for two weeks and around for two and a half years. Mm. Uh, on Dorothy Callaghan. And when I wrote that, it was a Dublin story set in Dublin, kind of aimed at a Dublin audience. And I don't mean to exclude the rest of the country, but I didn't know... It would travel. Uh, whatever, well, I didn't know yeah. whatever, whatever else to write. Yeah. Um, I didn't know the impact it would have. When I did the first book, I expected, again, it would get a Dublin audience, or an yeah. Irish audience, at least. Mm. But the book's now in 17 languages. Really? The book's been number in the top 10 in, in 22 countries around the world, including China and Japan. There's people writing stuff about me in Japan, I don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> They could be saying what the Irish people are saying. <laughs> the Irish writers are saying it's crap, but mm. uh, it's just it's it's it seems now. I, I was I'll give you an example. I was asked to do we were asked to do Mrs. Brown in, on Broadway. Now the reason I wouldn't do it on Broadway is because they want eight shows a, a week, and they want minimum they want me to be with the show for a year. Well, that's it's like having a real job. I yeah. could have stayed in the hotel business and done that, you know. <laughs> so I said no. So then they asked me would I rewrite it, but they want me to, when they, they said rewrite, they wanted it to be either a Jewish mother, an Italian mother, a Puerto Rican mother. And I started to realise from that, and from the mail I get from all over the world, yeah. there's a universal mother figure. Right. And that universal mother figure, the hand that rocks the cradle, and, and she could be Irish, Mexican, Italian, it doesn't matter, there is that figure that rules the roost, and she's definitely universal. Mrs Brown has this great saying about, her children, any of her children emigrating. You can emigrate, but I have a 4,000 mile umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. never get away. Yeah,